In this video, I'll show you how to create dashboard tabs. I've previously uploaded a video about this, but that method has become buggy after a recent Home Assistant update. I use this technique all over my dashboard, and it's a great way to show more info or buttons, but use less space. You will need to install local conditional card and paper button row from Hacks. As always, you can find the full code on the Gumroad link in the description. First, I start by creating a vertical stack card. This will house everything. Then I add the first local conditional card. For this example, I will just give it an ID of tab one, but you should probably give it a more unique ID, especially if you have more local conditional cards on the same dashboard. Maybe name it, for example, electricity underscore tab one, if it will house electricity stuff. Then make sure this first conditional card is shown by default. Now we can add the first card to this local conditional card. To make it easier down the line, I will add a vertical stack first. Then I'll just add a dummy alarm card and go into the card editor. This is where I will create the tab navigation at the top. For this example, I will add three tabs, but you can add as many as you want. You will just need a local conditional card for each of these buttons, but I'll explain that later. Start by creating a custom paper buttons row card. We use one indentation and a dash under buttons to create the first button. I'll use a predefined layout called name, and I just add tab one as the name. Now we can style this new button. We can style the name, i.e. the text, and the button separately. I use my own theme, you can find it in the description, so I can use color variables. But you can just use whatever hex or RGB values you want. You can for example use colorhunt.io to find nice colors. Next, let's add a background color to the button. This will be the active state so I'll use my usual gradient color. I'll round the button by adding a border radius of 24 pixels. And I'll also set the height to 24 pixels. Then I think we just have to set display to flex. I want to give the text some space so I'll add a padding of 022px. This add no padding up and down, but 22 pixel padding left and right. Then I set the text color to black instead. Now we need to make this button actually do something. We want to show or hide the local conditional cards depending on what button we click. The code here is very specific to local conditional cards, so check out the GitHub documentation if you are unsure. We need to set action to fire DOM event and the DOM event is local conditional card with underscores. Then we add action again and set it to set. And then we add the IDs that we want to set. So let's add tab one, tab two, and tab three. This button is tab one, so let's set tab one to show when we click it. The other two we set to hide. Now that we have the first button finished, we can just copy this code and paste it below. We just need to change a few things. I set name to tab two. Then I set the background of the button styling to none, and the text should be white instead. Then we update the tap action of this button to show the second local conditional card and hide number one and two. Then we can copy this button again and paste it below. Change the name again. In this recording, I forgot to edit the tap action. I noticed this mistake later on. Now that we have our three buttons, we can style this bar with buttons. I add a gray color in the background, as well as a four pixel border in the same color. Then I set the border radius to 28 PX. To move all the buttons closer together, we can set justify content to center. And to scale the bar to the content, we can set width to max content. Lastly, I want this bar of buttons to be centered. This is easy with a little margin trick. We can set margin to zero auto zero auto, meaning zero pixels up and down, but auto margins left and right. This will push it to the center. But I actually set the third value to 12 pixels so that we have a little gap between the buttons and the content that we will add next. Since we added a vertical stack to the local conditional card, it's easy to add more cards that will all be inside the conditional. Remember, the paper button row card is the first in the vertical stack. So let's just add a card below the paper button row by clicking the little plus icon. For this example, I will just add a simple title, but you should add whatever content you want to display. And as you can see, we now have a nice looking tab navigation with some content. But if we click any of the buttons, it's not really working because we are of course missing the content of tab two and three. So let's go back into the editor to add those. We can just grab the code of the whole first local conditional card and paste it onto a new card inside the main vertical stack. We need to change the ID of this to tab two. I also edit the text in the title card to tab two. Now we need to set the second button to be the active one. So let's move the background color or gradient from the first button over to the second. 
set the text color to black, and let's set the background of the first button to none. The text in the first button should also be white. Now importantly, we set this local conditional card to be hidden by default. And you can see that we now have functional tabs. We just need to add the third local conditional card. So let's copy this whole card again and paste it into the main vertical stack along with the two other local conditional cards. Process is the same. Edit the content and the ID. I set default to show just while I'm editing. Let's move the background color over to the third button again and set the color to black. On the second color, we make the text color white and the background to none. Then let's hide this local conditional card by default. And it's not working. Remember that I forgot to edit the tap action of the third button? So I need to go back and edit this inside each of the three local conditional cards. Because effectively, we have created the top navigation bar three times, we just hide two of them. So if you want to edit one button, you need to edit that button three times. Because of the way we have set this up with vertical stacks, it's actually pretty easy to find where in the code you need to do changes. You can just navigate between the tabs with the numbers at the top. Then the first card inside each local conditional card is the navigation bar buttons. And finally, we have fully working tabs. Now it's up to you to add whatever content you want. You could, for example, remove the title card and replace it with a two column grid, then place some buttons and sensor cards inside the grid. And that's it. Hopefully you learned something from this video. I use these exact tabs all over my dashboard. I think it's a great way to have more info and buttons, but use less space. If you use bubble card pop-ups, you can even use these tabs inside the pop-ups. Just remember to give the local conditional cards unique IDs. Thanks for watching. Until next time, have a good one.